Hello everyone, Vegan Mark here. I want to ask you the question, what are the best conversations in life you've ever had? And why are they the best that you've ever experienced? I've had a few conversations, not, not just a few conversations as in my time as a big issue vendor for seven years in Australia. I've had some really terrible conversations, I've had some reasonable conversations and I've had some really, really good ones. And I want to talk about the really, really good ones that I've had. One in particular which struck me and I read an article about recently. So, what is it about the conversations that we've had that made them really, really good? I think it's um, got to do with the chemistry that, that runs between individuals. And some people are good at this and some people are bad at it. Some people make a connection with others. They have an immediate connection with the other person, which is somewhat indescribable, somewhat intangible and unfathomable. And yet you can feel it. You can feel the warmth. You can feel the humility, the humbleness, the genuineness of these conversations. Some people are very mean. Others are speculative. Others are profound. One of the things that relates most conversations and what makes them rather, rather commonplace is the idea that people relate the real world back to themselves. They make inferences on others that are not arbitrary, but define a certain confirmation of belief. What I mean by this is when people look at you, they think a certain thing. And once they think of you in a certain way, they never stop thinking of you in that way. It's when we develop and nurture a different point of view that these things, these conversations can become very, very interesting. Christianity is a particular, um, it's both a melting pot and a nasty um, subject of discussion. Christianity involves the obligation sometimes to believe in the suffering of Jesus Christ to atone for our sins. And it's a very common theme running among conversations like you see all the time. Very rarely do you have a conversation where, in a, with, among a, with a Christian where you can just freely express yourself. Any view that you have, you can just freely express yourself and have it all sorts of disparate views and be, be feel comfortable in the idea that you can just express what you want to express. I am not a Christian, nor am I unaware of what a Christian is, but nor am I completely uninfluenced by the religion because I feel that it expresses some interesting ideas which, if presented in a fresh way, do present some sort of value to the other person. The problem with Christianity is that when you speak to another Christian, there is often an ulterior motive. One has picked, once one has picked that motive, it's very to, hard to retain the conversation without stereotyping the other person. So when we try to verify biblical text, which some people call the absolute word of God, when we have an obligation to believe in the sacrificial nature of Jesus Christ, or we condemn the very same person, Jesus, we are all falling into the traps of conversation that lead it to absolutely nowhere. So I think that to create an equilibrium in conversation, to create an ongoing chemistry and an ongoing liveliness to the conversation, it's necessary for us to avoid all those pitfalls that pervade a, Christ, a heavily, devoutly Christian conversation. So this, there was this man who came up to me while there was a Christian preacher preaching in the streets very close to me when I was selling magazines. The man came up to me and asked me the question, what's your opinion on this? He gestured toward the preacher and said, what's your opinion on this, this 
sort of thing. He didn't raise an opinion, he simply asked a question. And I made a connection with him because for some reason he didn't make a judgment on what was happening. He just asked me the question, what do you think about this? We had the conversation. I don't remember much of the middle of part of the conversation, unfortunately. But I remember him leaving me with the line, keep thinking, keep trusting. The man gave me his full attention like no one had ever done before. And I will never forget the brief moments that he gave me in that in, the, in those few brief few minutes of time. I got the idea that he, was a, he wasn't neither a Christian nor, nor a non-believer. He was someone who had given me just t part of his time of the day, who was able to engage with me on a full and equanimous level, who was able to do, do everything possible for me in those brief few moments without judgment or discernment. He was very observant. I was observant too. We were observant of each other. I didn't know whether he was careful with his money, whether he was someone who liked to splurge occasionally, but I forget the impression that he was a very responsible person. Maybe he was looking to be friends. Maybe he was looking to be someone who made a connection with me. But he was not too cool for me. He was not arrogant. He was not unkind. He was very kind and he was very responsible with his words and with his actions. So it's likely I will never see that man again. It's likely we will never meet and I will never know his name. But on that very special day, I think I found the one person who made such a great connection with me. And I'll always be grateful to him for the brief moments that he spent with me. Thank you for listening to me. I hope I've made the connection with you today and I hope that you will remember, like I remember, that person who made the connection with me on the streets that very fine day. Bye for now.